Alrighty, we are back again with another video. I am sitting here going through a lot of cane that I've made in the past and I have not used. Or I've mused on something else. And I think it's time to make one of these necklaces. So the collar necklaces I don't make very often. But I just love this shape. So we're going to go ahead and make that. i got to find the piece I'm going to use and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back, and I just love this Makumi Gani. And I think it's going to be perfect with this shape. Okay, so we're going to cut out, we're going to cut out a couple pieces, but we're going to make these kind of thin. Just enough to where I know that when I sand I am not, oh, these are horrible. Okay, I'm going to pull out my Lucy Clay Slicer. Isn't it sad that I've got one and I don't use it? It's just way off in the back here because I don't have a whole lot of room. So it kind of makes it difficult sometimes to pull it out. Okay. All right. So I know where I want this. Gonna stick it to the back like that and we're gonna push this thing forward just a little bit so about right there is where I want it okay so let's go a little more you could put a piece of clay or something behind this okay so Hmm. I'll tell you what the problem is, is when this will not go up any farther. So don't mind me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another cane. I'm going to grab one I don't care for. And I'm going to put that against the back like that. There we go. And then we're going to put that right there. And that way, I can take this all the way back and still move forward. Might take a little bit of time. Sorry, I'm not used to using this, as you can tell. Go a little more. So about right there is where I want it. So I just want to make sure that it's even. Go about right there. Let's see, and it's still not even. Maybe now it will be. And I still want to do other stuff with this cane. So I don't want to use it all. So I'm going to do about three of them. Okay, let's see where that puts us for now. Uh, this is just like one of my favorite ones that I've made. And I don't say that very often. So I've got that side and that side. Hmm, I don't know. This one's not quite good. So the way I do this is I just kind of play a little bit. At least without a pattern. You can stick these on there any way you want. Okay, so that's three. So I think I just need one more. So I'm going to move that over. I don't want to give anybody the heebie-jeebies as I cut through this. Because I think this would be a beautiful hair slide. Okay, so while I'm doing that, I 
I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest up. And on the hair slides, I do it a little thicker. But if I like it a lot, then I'll have to make me another cane. And the sad part is, is I will never make one like this again. So I can only make one either better or a little worse. And I'm hoping for a little better. And we're just going to use it all here. Okay. All right. So now... That's going to be for the hair slide. And we're going to stick this right back on. I wish I had a bigger workspace. And we're going to tie up that little bolt right there. Okay, and I might end up moving the camera. So if I do, I'll get you back in a second. Okay, so now we're going to grab some black. So I want this kind of thick because they're going to be pendants, but I don't want them too thick because I'm going to use jump rings to put, um, to attach them together. So I'm going to grab some black clay. I ordered blades. I ordered them from Amazon, but I ordered blades. I had to tell you that because every time I make a video, I complain to you guys about how I don't have any blades. So I made sure today that I ordered some. I didn't cut that very thin, did I? Okay. Now we're just going to cut a really nice piece out of this. I love that black and white does not have to be conditioned very well. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it in half. And I think that should be the size that we need. Okay. And then we're going to lay this down. Hmm. There we go. It kind of looks like it'll be together. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so now we're going to just get it nice and even. I don't think deli paper is something I should use because it seems like it creases really easy. So let me grab some printer paper here. Probably shouldn't do it where there's writing. This is my diagram for that up house I'm making. I still haven't finished it. I've been so busy with orders that I have not been able to finish the house yet. So I'm hoping tomorrow is, oh, tomorrow's Wednesday. Today's Tuesday. The holiday. I have a, I have a sale running. So I think it's going to be busy all week. But normally Tuesdays and Thursdays are my slowest days of the week. So that way I take the slow days and I start making some of the stuff that I've ran out of. And stuff like that. Okay, so. The other one looks really good, but this one's... This one's kind of giving me a crease, and I didn't want a crease. Now, I am very, very curious of how thick this is going to be. Because obviously, I hope I didn't make it too thick. 
So before cutting into this, I'm going to cut off a corner piece just to see where we're at. Okay, I'll get rid of this extra black. Yeah, these are probably my favorite color combos. So let's see where we're at. Well, not too bad. I want it to be, I want it to have substance, basically. So I think that's going to be okay. All right, so now, hmm. this cane's not old, but it is cracking a little bit. I didn't condition the cane, obviously, because you don't want to do that. So this is going to make it a little thinner. And I don't know where that came from, but that's okay. Because you can just throw acrylic paint over that and it'll all go away. Alright, so I'm going to try and avoid that one spot right here if I can. So this is the center. Since I've got a lot of these running lines here, I'm going to take this right here for the center. Okay, so there's one. So if I go, I don't know, two and three right there, and that could be four right in there and five right in there. And I'm just going to avoid this seam right here. So sometimes you got to do that. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Trying to get it to match, although it doesn't really matter. This has got a lot of brown. <laughs> I don't want that seam. Okay, that might work. That might work, and that might just pull me right out of that seam. Okay. And then this one, I'm just going to put right here with all these squiggly lines and I'm going to try and avoid that and come over here and do all these squiggly lines too right there okay ta-da now the fun part right so yes I have some spots that are kind of wasted but I'm going to go grab me a dagger or two and I'm going to make a couple pairs of earrings out of those. Okay, so on these, I'll grab a tile here. Okay, I'm not going to cut the hole until after it comes out. These might be too thick for earrings, so what I could do, whether or not it works or not, I don't know. Let's see, you can take this right here, okay, and put it right in there. And it is a little thick, so I'm going to put it through at a zero. And 
and then in one more time at a number one. Okay, so that didn't stick all too well, but that's okay right there. I'm going to try using this again. and smooth so I mean literally I could take those and make an earring out of them but they're kind of an ugly shape on their own so let me see what I've got I think a dagger would be perfect dagger or I just had one of these what the heck that doesn't look too bad either so we're going to do that over here and I'm going to do that over here uh, I don't want that piece if I can avoid it I'm going to Okay, so I've got those two. And I've got a dagger right here. Okay, and again, we're going to lift that. Okay, and I'm going to try and get a couple more little pieces out of here. This is going to look great with a leaf. And I don't have any big tiles, so I'm going to have to transfer these. I have tiles, I just don't know where I put them. Okay, so we're going to do that. Okay, so we're going to throw these in the oven. And look at them now. Yeah, they look good. They're normal. But boy, oh boy, when we actually put resin on these. Let's see, I've got water in here. Dirty water, but it's water, right? And you can already, yeah, see. Yeah, you won't be able to see it until it comes out. We're going to go throw these in the oven, and we'll come back, and we'll... Show it to you before resin, and then we'll show it to you after resin, and then we'll assemble. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey guys, so we are back, and we're just going to show you what I do to finish these up. So this is the necklace that we made yesterday. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of stuff over here that we've made. I made a couple ghosts. I don't usually make earrings that are Halloween themed, but with the show being in October, I will. But anyways, I made those little little ghost and then I made these little roses in black and I'll probably attach those and this has got some iridescent finishing on them so we're gonna make a couple ghosts today but anyways back to this so I had some extra pieces as you know and I went ahead and made a couple hair slides I have one that is sanded so what I do on all of my stuff to make it clean is I use a Posca marker. Um, sometimes I'll use just an off-brand acrylic paint, but this is all that I've got right now. So I'm just going to use a Posca. And basically, after you're sanded, I run this on the side. Okay, I just run it because it kind of cleans up the edges a little bit. Yeah, um, you can go all the way up. Just be careful you don't go all the way up and over. I've done that a few times and then had to re-sand the top a little bit to get it off. And the one thing great about this is it also shows you if your sides are sanded well. Because if not, you'll see little little lines in it. biggest um, challenge is keeping your hands off of it and 
my hands are not working very well today. Okay, so that side's done, this side is not. Okay, and basically I do that all around and I just lay it down, let it dry a little bit, but then I'll throw it in the oven and I'll throw them in there for about 20 minutes. You don't have to, but if you put them in for 20 minutes, it seems to set the paint. Okay, so as you can see, you got a little line right there and a little line right there, which means it's not sanded as good as it can be. So I'm going to probably go back in and do a little more finished sanding to make sure that this is all even. So this is a really cool way of finding out and to know you're even. We'll be getting all that paint off at the same time. Yeah, I don't like that one. <clears throat> These look fine. It's nice and smooth. Oh, except for that right there. So there's another one I'm going to have to redo. But anyways, I'm going to go on all of these. Yeah, there's. I didn't get a great sand job on these, so I'm going to have to go back and sand them a little more. This one looks good. Go figure, the one with the curved space that is usually the hardest to sand came out the best. Okay, so we got one good piece out of that. Nope, see, got a little bit right there. So, that means I need to resand just a little bit more, but I'm going to do that on all of my pieces here. And then I'm going to throw them in the oven for about 20 minutes. And then we will come back and put resin on them. Put some jump rings on them and see how it ends up. So, the ones that are usually that I have a hard problem with came out perfect. Okay, so we'll see you in a bit. Alrighty guys, so we are back and ready to resin. So we've got all of our sides nice and black, nice and smooth. And this I'm not going to put resin on that. I'm just going to put a varnish on. But these are the pieces I'm going to resin. So this is that one necklace. And I never know how to put these together. Nope, that goes there and that's gonna go there and I don't know why I'm setting this up now but just to give you an idea of what they're gonna look like when they're done okay and if you see them right now they look all dark and dingy to me they look dark and dingy so now with the resin Hopefully it'll brighten all of those up. So I wish I could tell you where I get my resin. Unfortunately, she's not working anymore. But this is RJ Craft. This is Easy Dome, I think, or or something like that. And we're gonna do the front piece first. Yeah, this is probably my favorite resin and I wish she would make it available or allow somebody else to sell it I even told her you can make the money off of it um, I'll drop ship it for you you know as long as the shipping and all that's paid and go straight into your account and it's not costing me any money to send it out I will do it for you but she never got back to me on that so I guess she didn't want to do that but I liked it so much that I didn't care if I had to work for free you know what I mean to keep this on the market so 
So I'll try again. And see what she says. Okay, so I'm just making sure that it's all up to the sides and to the middle. Okay, so there's one. Make sure there's no dog hairs in them, too. Because around here, that happens all the time. Okay, so there's those three. Now we're going to start off with these. And then I'll try and put them up underneath the camera again. Show you what they look like with the resin on it. still dark but you can see all the mica powder in it now I can't wait till the show is over this is why I only do a couple a year I just hate always preparing and stressing and I don't know about you guys, but the economy really sucks right now. Can't say that any nicer. Yeah, I need some more on this. I got a couple holes right there. So I don't even know what this show's going to be like. And they added half a day. I don't know if I told you that. Cause it used to be a two day show, and then the budget didn't call for anything. So there was no show for quite a few years. I'm going to say almost 10. And so I found other shows to do. And then they brought this back and they didn't even charge you to sell there. They asked you to give them a check as a deposit. You know, so you didn't back out. And if you didn't back out, then they just refunded you your money. Because they just really wanted to get artists involved. And then finally, after, what, maybe four years? They're thinking about extending it a day. So it's now a day and a half. It seems kind of silly. If you're going to do two days, do two days. But I know that if they do two days, they're going to double the price. So right now, I just pay one fifty, And I'm pretty sure it'll probably go up to 300 if they make it a two-day show. Which I don't have a problem with. And they don't let any outside vendors in that are not creators. You know, you can't just go to Michael's, buy some beads, turn them into jewelry and sell them. They want everything made. So that's why I'm trying to use my glass beads and even my clay beads to kind of mix with my store-bought beads and that way you can get away with at least using other components because me making a glass necklace that's all glass is really heavy all right so now that I've got it all over there's a couple spots right here Looks like they could use a little more. 
These are always going to back themselves back to the center. Uh, that looks fine. I think this one could use just a little more. This one's got a dome, and so everything's moving back into the center. All right, so we are going to get a tile, just so I can pick it up and look at it real closely. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're going to show you what they look like resined. Okay, I've got all the air bubbles out. So these little sparkly things right here is mica powder. But you can just run your lighter over it. I use the torches. They don't seem to hurt your fingers as much as the other ones. So we're going to go ahead and put this in or under the UV light for about 30 minutes. also put it in the sunshine okay so that's ready and we'll come back and we'll put that one together so we'll talk to you soon alrighty guys so we are ready to pull our pieces from under the UV lamp and we got a nice little shine on them they look very organic looking I like the colors so we're going to start with the necklace and we'll finish off with the bracelet. So I put a coat of varnish on the um, hair slide we got. I use that instead of resin because that way it'll bend a little easier, I think. All right, so I do have a necklace where that came from. Okay, and this is the one we made before. So I'm going to do basically the same thing. If I can get this set up. Okay, and I'm going to use jump rings on the back ends and two on each ends. Okay, I love this one. This was probably my favorite piece that I've made. It's just very bright and it's just a really pretty piece. We'll see what happens if it sells or not. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to mark my corners, okay, and that way I know exactly where the hole's going to go, so I'm going to kind of move the camera over, you know what, I'm just going to pause it really quick, so I'm just taking a sharpie and marking the edges, but i got to put my head under here, so let me hit pause real quick. Okay, so I've got everything marked, so basically I like to just go where the triangle end flares out. And why, okay, there it is. I'm not sure why I didn't have a dot there, but it's there. You just can't see it. And then obviously we're going to grab our drill. Okay. And I, I hold the drill to my chin, believe it or not. Because it gives me a steadier hand. And I'll go in from the front, and then I'll go in from the back. If I go in from the back to the front, then I usually have an issue with my resin um, kind of breaking. It kind of peels a little bit. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to go close to the edge enough to where it's not going to make this thing stable. So that's why I like coming in just a little bit. So yes, you will have to use bigger jump rings, but it's worth it in the end. I'm just going to make all my holes and then I'll come back and clean up the back. Okay. This side now. And then if you have any Sharpie left over, you can always go back in there with some alcohol. And clean it all out.
Okay, now I just got the little pieces. And this piece for some reason is gummed. Okay, so this is the tough part because you don't want to get close to that edge. And you'll go right through the piece. Yes, it definitely makes a mess. My fingers just basically locked up. And while we're at it, I'm going to do these at the same time, and I usually put them in the same place, right where they flare out. Wipe these down a little bit. And because this has gold in it, it's got a little bit of everything in it. I think copper would just kind of blend in with it, but I think the gold again will, will kind of spark these up. Alrighty, so now let's get some gold jump rings and I'll put these together. Alright, so I'm using thicker jump rings because I don't want these to fall off. And these might be a little big. So let's see what happens when we put it in. Okay, so this one goes on that side. So I need this one, and I've gone through the back. So again, you're going to go through the back to the front. Okay, this might be the perfect size jump ring. We're going to find out in a minute, right? So we're just going to work harden the wire. And that will make it a little harder. Okay, so that's huge. And if I look on my other one, I don't know if I've got that much room. Actually, I do. It's a little big. So I'm going to set this right here and go one smaller. Which I think are these. Okay, and we have one more right here. And that looks like the same as those, they are. One is a little thicker, one is a little thinner. Okay, so let's try this one. I don't know why I put these away. All right, so I'm going to try this one on the other side, see which one I like better. So we're just going to open that up. Front to back. Ah. Back to front.
Okay. So one side I'm going to do with the little ones. So I'm going to need one, two, three, and four. And then the other side I'm going to do that one. And that way I can gauge which one is laying better on the other one. Okay, so again, back to front. Sometimes these like to get out of hand here. Which is why sometimes the bigger ones work a little better. Okay, so I'm going to look. Okay, so this gives it a little more room. This is a little tight. So I'll tell you that now that I'm I'm looking towards the bigger one. But I'm going to go all the way to the end anyways. To the front. Sometimes it's just such a pain to get them through. back always and then back to front oh it was easier doing the big one first So far, by just playing with them a little bit and having the difficulties I am having and thinking that the bigger ones are going to work better. I'm not even going to put that end piece on yet. Okay, so that's that side right there. I'm going to hold on to that one. And then I'm going to come over here. What do I need? Two, three, four. So back to the front on this one. So that will be front to back. back and this one's going to be like that I don't trust my fingers all right so hold on I just want to make sure that yeah I was in the wrong one all right I need the bottom. Am I in the bottom or in the top? No, I need that one. Okay, so we'll do one more. Back to front. All right. 
Yeah, I know I moved off a of camera, but I don't think you need to see my struggle. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So by using the small ones, I mean they work, but there's a little more movement. See how this is laying? Now with the chain on it, it may not do that. I'm kind of looking at these. And actually, I don't know, those look like, like these, but there's a lot of space in between these two. Compared to this, it's just really close. I like the way these move, but I don't like the way that one moves. Let's try one more thing. Let's find a beautiful chain to go with this. <sighs> hmm. This actually might work. Then you got to figure out where to cut the chain. But for now, so where are we at? All right, we're going to gauge it by using this necklace. So that's a little different than this one. And then what I'll do is I'm going to put this through the actual clasp. Uh, this is a different chain, so I just need to get it close, you know what I mean? Alright. So we're going to go right there. And I'm going to get a cutter. A million cutters until I need them. Are you kidding me? Well, this is thin enough that I might actually be able to use a pair of scissors because my cutters that should be in here are not here. So we're going to try this. And yeah, don't use a good pair of scissors to do this. Use an old pair. May work, it may not work. Ah, and these scissors are so small. Okay, so that's one. Okay, and then we're going to come back in here. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on here. And put it on the first ring like that. Okay, and then you know how to get it even. So we're going to cut that one off right there. I can't believe I'm cutting this with a pair of scissors. Alrighty. So on this again, we're going to use the big one. Is that one smaller than this one? Okay, this one's the smaller one, I think. I left one of them out. So we're going to put this one right here. 
Nope, wrong side. Put the big one right there. Okay. And this is the smaller one. Yeah, I don't like the feel to this side. I have a feeling I'm going to end up using the other one. Probably used the wrong side of the chain because if I would have used the other side I would have had this nice little extension so I'll probably take that off and then we're going to just grab a small but thick jump ring that way we know it's not going anywhere Yep, off camera, just opening up a jump ring here. And this is just to try it out, because I'm going to pull that extender off of the other one. Oh, what am I doing? And yes, I could have put it right through the link while that was open, but I didn't. Okay, so what we're going to do really quick is lay this on something. And we're going to see what it looks like. I know that you can't see it from where you are. I'm going to take you off here. And this is what we got. And it's really dark in my office, and yes, this looks really long because it's on one of these. So, as far as it laying, you know, the reason you want smaller jump rings is so that it doesn't move around like that. But regardless of which one I use, it seems to do it. I don't like the way this lays, okay, it's too close. Now let me do that other one. That was already made. Yeah, this is going to be a little longer, but it's just because of this. Oh. Let me attach this to the back here. Okay, so, oops, so I'm missing a jump ring, but I do like the way this lays. It just lays a lot better. There's enough space in between both of them. So it's kind of funny that these are the jump rings that I didn't like, that I took out. And so this one's a completely different piece. Okay, and as you can see, these all pretty much lay pretty well except for missing a jump ring obviously so anyways I'm gonna fix that but that's what it looks like so I've got a little bit of deciding on how to do this you know because the jump rings they do hold it farther across off your body as well so that's it. Um, yeah, we're going to clean up here and see if we can figure out how to make this a little better. Um, I couldn't really, as you can see, where that jump ring is, I couldn't drill the hole any closer to that edge without it falling apart. So I think I'm going to put the big ones on on those as well. Or if I can find one in between this one and this one, I will do it and then I'll show you the finished picture at the very end. So I will talk to you soon. Bye. All right, guys, we're back. We went with the bigger jump rings for now. I am going to go on Fire Mountain since I'm buying stuff anyways and see if they have any oval jump rings that are just a little longer than what I have because, as you know, the piece is really thick and the biggest jump rings I have that are oval are like this. And that's just not going to fit through the width of that and yeah it's just not going to happen so i'm going to have to play around a little bit more and see if i can find it if anybody has a good source for um 
jump rings that are oval that are big let me know just put it in the comments because I don't even know where to look um, I'll probably go on Etsy right now and let's see I don't I like putting it upside down I'm trying to make these earrings really quick yeah it's just gonna be one of these days I think Oh, you know how you get just so tired of just creating. I'm getting to that point where I'm like, I've got enough. Stop. But sometimes you just got to keep going, right? See, and I want to use that, but I kind of want to, I don't know. I like it better upside down. Alright, so we're going to try one more. So here are those oval. And the reason I don't like these is because they open from the side and I'm not used to that. But I guess if it works, I'll be happy, but... What is that? That was put to the back. To the, to the back, to the front. See, they're just really, really small here. So this isn't going to be easy to hang as well. I have nothing to grab on. All right, let's try one. Oh, and I'd have to turn that around so that that piece isn't there. See, but that's as far as I can go, and it's too small. So if any of you guys know where I could find them, please let me know. And that is it for now, guys. Thank you for hanging in with me and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we'll talk to you later. Bye.